welcome to today's video. I am in JB now. I've stopped here for a rest break just to get some drinks and food. It's been about an hour in. Sun is already out. I started quite late today around 7 a.m. because I overslept. I was intending to wake up at 5.30 but anyway, all my friends are down with COVID so I have decided to go on my own and I thought that this video would probably be a good time to talk about recovering from COVID because as I mentioned from a few videos ago, I got COVID around the end of May. It's been around five to six weeks now and I think that I'm almost back to baseline. I bought this bread because I'm alone today. So my fueling strategy is very important because if I bonk, then there's nobody to save me. I think in terms of my infection, I got it quite bad. I was bedridden for about four days. Uh, the sore throat was really bad. I had cough. It was very, very phlegmy and that one lasted around three weeks. I think the majority of it was just feeling very tired and lethargic. So on day eight, I started to ride again. I did 40 minutes on the turbo. I started to get a bit of chest tightness, so I decided to stop. Two days later, I tried again and I managed to do an hour or an hour and a half. I can't remember. And later on in the week, I did around an hour and a half. All these were zone one, zone two rides. So phase two of getting back to shape was mainly zone two training as usual. But this time I did add in some intensity, some intervals. I like the 40-20s because I feel like instead of doing three minute or five minute VO2 max efforts, you do 40 seconds on, and then I've had 20 seconds rest. I feel like that's a lot easier to cope with because you don't have to do such a long range of effort at one go, especially when you're just trying to get back to fitness. Okay, we're on our way again. It was getting a bit hot, so I decided to just ride off first. It's a base ride. I want to get about four to five hours in. Mainly just something at endurance pace. My plan for today is to ride to Pontian and back. Uh, the whole thing should take me around 4 to 5 hours about 130 k's Monday to Monday. I've been planning to come on this route for quite a while I thought it would be nice because you know no traffic lights good scenery so far traffic has been a little bit heavy but at least the road surface is really smooth and nice Okay, and I finally arrived. It took me about two hours to get here, so it should be around two hours back, I suppose. My aim was actually to just come here, have breakfast, and then go back. I haven't found a place to have breakfast yet, so I'm just gonna go look around and then see if there's anywhere nice to stop for breakfast. I'm sure many of you have heard of Pontian Wan Tan Mi. When I was doing my research, I found the place. I had it marked out on my Google Maps but the best part is I forgot to buy roaming so actually I'm here without internet and I can't really find it forgot to save it also and I forgot to save my offline maps so I'm just relying on my Wahoo's map and kind of roughly know where it is but let's see if I'm able to find it or not Should I come all the way here to eat McDonald's? Okay, I think I have found the place. I 
I found this eatery on Google but it probably isn't one of the popular ones because when I went there it was quite empty the noodles were okay though but yeah if you have other recommendations I would be interested in those as well Pontian is a seaside town on the west coast before I went there the only thing I knew about it is that they are famous for their wonton mee because we always hear of Pontian wonton mee in Singapore actually I didn't know anything else I went to the fish market today and I realized that they are also a fishing town that's pretty much the only thing that I've learned about it otherwise I've refueled and bought a big bottle of 100 plus all set for the journey home now started to get quite cloudy so that's good at least it's not that hot it's been a rather enjoyable ride so far it's a little bit hot it's been a bit hard to film because I'm not really familiar with the route and I've just got to pay a bit of attention back in Singapore on the way back it was way too hot for me to film it was like 38 degrees uh, actually my legs still feel okay but it's just my skin that's not okay and the heat is just unbearable I had to stop at a petrol station to get a drink first back to talking about COVID if you are currently down with COVID or you just recovered I think it's normal to expect that your fitness is definitely going to take a hit I don't think you'll be back to baseline once you come out of isolation and sometimes the hit can be quite hard probably will be a lot more than you expect like even for me climbing stairs after that I will easily hit 130, 140 heart rate personally I feel like the important thing is to not push through the breathlessness or discomfort because in the initial phase your body is still trying to fight the virus so you want to conserve as much energy as you can for your immune system even up to the point where I went to Dizaru about three weeks post-infection I think I was still very breathless the tarmac is quite smooth also like you can feel that even though you're not pushing that hard you're just riding normally but you get out of breath very easily and that's kind of expected but you just gotta hang tight and continue the low intensity stuff eventually you get back to it at some point if you feel well enough then you can consider starting the higher intensity workouts I also found Zwift very useful for getting back into shape it's a very good way to have a controlled environment to train it keeps you in zone 2 you don't accidentally exceed your zones or push yourself harder than you want to because on the road you have cars and terrain to deal with the other thing is also if at any time you feel unwell you can just hop off and go and shower I thought that was really helpful and also it provided me with a very controlled environment for me to compare my power output as well as heart rate up until a few weeks ago for a given power let's say 130 watts my heart rate was a little bit disproportionate like it would be 140 150 which was not normal at all and i guess i kind of use that as a gauge of my recovery a lot of people have this misconception that after the seven days of isolation they've recovered but actually the virus lives inside your tissues for much longer and they have even found like the viral particles still in your heart even six months after which also explains why if you feel like you're not very well you shouldn't push through it so aside from the training stuff what I did was also try to sleep more I avoided alcohol for two weeks to preserve my immune system as much as possible it's quite important to just try to reduce the stress on your body and conserve as much as possible that's all from me about COVID to summarize initially when you get back to training it's definitely going to be slow you're gonna feel breathless maybe some chest discomfort just take it easy focus on letting your body fight the virus and not worry so much about your fitness and all that and after a while once your body has sort of overcome the virus then you can start to think about training again give it some time the fitness will come back you didn't lose it somewhere there so just need to be patient eventually you'll be back for me it took me around five weeks i would say to get to 95 percent for the same power i'm definitely still working at a higher heart rate and at least i feel fresh in general like it's 147k now i still feel okay except for the heat that's how i know it's coming back that's all from me for this video i hope you have learned something if you haven't seen the video of the first ride that i did post recovery you can check it out in the link above and also do check out our Dizaru vlog as well 
thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next episode. Bye-bye.